Okay, this is a tutorial on how to add a couple of visual elements to your portfolio. In our previous video, I had shown you how to add these little horizontal rulers. And if you didn't catch that, it's just simply clicking in the divider over here. Notice that, that it um, drops it right here or in this particular case. And then I can go ahead and move it around. For the moment, I'm gonna leave that one there. But this one up here, I'm going to click on it and click on my little trash can on the left-hand side, and I'm going to show you another little uh, technique. I've added a little text box here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that to the top. And now I'm going to... not sure if I want to keep it as a um, all caps, but I'm going to start there going to go ahead and click on that as being a title and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color now notice that the colors here are governed by my theme so in this particular case I'm going to choose emphasis 2 and that's going to put that in there and I'm going to go ahead and do something very similar for my electives and I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to make this a title. I might play with making it a heading, but we'll see later on. And then I'm going to add an emphasis two to that. I'm going to go ahead and publish it. Egads, where did it go? Sorry about that. And so now I can go ahead and get rid of this one because then that way it breaks it up. I can go ahead and click on publish. And that is it. I'm going to go ahead and preview it. And now this is what the page looks like. So it gives a little bit more of a visual layout to the page. The one thing I would probably immediately say is be consistent between these core courses areas and this elective. So I believe I'm going to close my preview here and I'm going to double check and this is a title and so I'm going to make that a title. I'm going to click on publish and that's adding different pieces of content just for visual breakup. Okay, the next portion of what I'm going to talk about is adding images. So over here on the right hand side, I've got under my insert tab, I've got the option for images. So I'm going to go ahead and click on images and I've gone ahead and searched for Ramapo. And I'm going to find an image and I'm going to click on select. And notice that it lands the image into its own little block to begin with. It could have, depending on where you were clicked, landed it into another block. But essentially from here, there's basically two things it can do. One is that it can be almost like a text box on its own and you can increase it or decrease it as you would want to. So if I wanted that to take over the entire screen, I could, right? Or alternately, I could obviously shrink it by dragging on one of its handles or I could add it to an existing text box and I want to show you how to do that and give you a couple tips. So for example, let me undo that. Example, my first example is I'm going to add it to this particular box down here because I do have a little bit of white space over here uh, that I can add into that. So I'm going to click and drop that in there. Now notice that it lands in this box and so now my text has become a part of this particular box and that's great but I want to be really clear here if I decide that I want to get rid of this notice how this delete button is up here but that the blue bar is around this entire chunk of content 
If I were to hit my delete can, I would lose that text as well. So I'm going to hit control Z and undo that. I can to not get rid of my text or my secondary box here. Notice that I can click on these boxes individually. So let me show you that one more time. As I come into this area and click, it selects the entire column of content. I don't want to do that. I want to click just on the box and then I can click on the box and click on delete or I could crop it or I could resize it. I'm going to go ahead and delete for the moment. Um, but I'm going to do it one more time and show you one more time because I think you can also see that there's other things you can do. So if you notice that that was dropping that particular image into a text area, but you can also drop it into your header area. And you might do that particularly if you don't want your entire header to have a background image. I'm going to go ahead and preview that. And there it is. So that's a pretty traditional location for an image if you wanted to do that. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I'm going to go ahead and put this back here. And I'm going to actually move this box whoops, on top. And I'm going to go ahead and publish that. So once I've done that, of course, with this box, he, he kind of got rearranged. So I'm going to have to resize him. And then I'm going to go ahead and republish him one more time. So now let's talk about themes. Themes are a lot of fun. Over here on the right hand side, you have multiple themes and themes in this particular case govern the style as well as the font and some of the graphics. So in this particular case, we've started out as the simple theme and I can drop down and click on different font styles. And I can also choose to change my color patterns if I wanted to up to and including a custom color. So if I wanted to do that, I could. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on publish for that. And that would allow me to have a custom theme. I can go ahead and play with some of my other theme combinations and take a look at those kinds of things here. Notice that it's defaulting to the custom color because I'd already chosen that. I can go to something else and yet again something else. So those are some of the theme options. You can tell in this particular theme, or actually I can't quite determine whether you can tell, but there's a world map sitting behind this graphic. So let's also talk about the header. So one of the things that's a lot of fun, I'm going to actually go back to the simple theme. I can go ahead and change my header type to where it's title only. I can change it to where it's banner or I can change it to where it's a large banner and I'm going to go ahead and publish that right now it's on the large banner and let me show you what that would look like. Um, it takes up a substantial amount of your front uh, or your top page area. If you want to play with that by all means do so. I can also click on change image and I can select an image by um, searching for it. I can go to the gallery, which is what I'm going to do right now, or I could upload it. Um, I could do a variety of different kinds of things. For my particular work here today, I'm going to choose, I don't know, this one, okay? And so now I'm going to publish that. I'm going to go ahead and preview that, and that's what my portfolio looks like right now. So this ends this particular tutorial on how to customize your Google site to somewhat mimic your MSCT site. Stay tuned for other tutorials.